Okay. So, the way that InDesign handles color and, well, actually, let's, let me fix this type first. So, basically, we're, you know, we've added our type. We don't have all our type boxes yet. That's okay. We can do that in the future. Uh, we're going to take this one and we're going to make it a headline that's just going to say Mark Ryden in this box. So, I'm going to highlight Mark Ryden and I'm going to make the type a whole lot larger and you know I can get to the type here so I'll go in and I'll say oh maybe let me change font first and oh, what do I want I'll do Bauhaus and then I'm gonna make this quite a bit larger way too large Let's go with 30. No, way too small. That's perfect. Okay, so I wanted it to fill. So it's filling my spot. I would probably adjust Creatrix out, make her bigger, maybe crop a little of her possibly, I don't know, or adjust it eventually. But I would maybe go and move this uh, type box so that it was a little smaller to fit and then I can also adjust where I want this box to be too. And to change the color on it, um, you can sample a color. And the one thing I, I don't like about InDesign is it gives you this color picker, which is kind of annoying because, I mean, you can get to all the colors, but it's harder to do the whole range. Uh, so there's another way that's actually pretty cool and what you do you go to window and you go to extension and you open cooler 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 was it used to be a website that that uh, had color wheels and let you pick color and for a while it was subscription you had to pay for it and then now they must have bought, Adobe probably bought them out, and they've introduced it as part of their software with InDesign. And it's kind of neat because if you click into it, it opens up a little section. And, you know, you can browse. Um, you can also go in and you can click and these are like different schemes that people have made because Cooler was a community so designers would make color schemes and they'd post the color schemes and it seems weird but designers I guess we're weird you know we like color so they would come up with really cool schemes and share them maybe share what they use them on and so some of these are from that but what I like about it I don't use that much but you can go in and you can do create and that pops you into the color wheel and you can do color schemes if you want to um, or you could say custom and then you can really do your color scheme and once you have the color you like you can go in and you can say you could upload the theme to cooler that's the website I don't know that you want to do that I would say I would click, I think it's this one here. Hopefully it's that one. There's one that pops it into swatches. No, where is it? Oh, here, it's this button. So it says add this theme to swatches. So I'm going to click it, and now they're all there. It just added those new colors. So that can be a nice way to work. Now you can also go in to the color picker and you can sample. So I can grab the eyedropper tool and I can go in and say, well, I know I want bluish gray. So I'm going to go in, um, let me cancel, I don't want that, I want just the eyedropper. I know I want bluish gray, so I'm going to go and grab what I think I might want. And from there now, I'm going to go to swatches, and this is a little different. You don't drag it. You go here to the new swatch button, and you say new swatch, 
And notice it used the color that's in the color picker. That's really smart if you think you're going to use that color in more than one spot. Then you have it. It's there. The InDesign color system has always bothered me because it doesn't have the libraries. It doesn't have the same picker. But there are ways to get around it. And I don't know why they haven't made it the same, but they seem they never have. So that's the way it is. Uh, now I could go in and I can just highlight Mark Ryden and pick my color I made and put that in. And if I was going to use, say, the same color throughout and I had more than one heading, or even on the body copy, I chose the font I liked and I knew I wanted to use it, I could do this. Let me just show you it so you know how to do it. Um, not that I would really need that in this instance, but I'm going to highlight it. And then I'm going to go to Window, and I'm going to open the Styles panel, and I want Paragraph Styles. And this is another one I can pop into here and have it. And with this highlighted, I'm going to say New Style. And what that's going to do is it's going to copy the font, the size of the font, and the color. And anything that I click that style onto, it's going to throw it on there. So when you guys do the interview, you know, I was having you change to italic and change the color maybe so that you could tell the interviewer's question from Mark Ryden's uh, when I showed you guys Wednesday. You could have a style of that and then all you have to do is highlight it, click the style. You wouldn't have to change everything manually. So it's nice to do. So I would click and say new style and then I would name this and I would call it you know headings or headlines whatever you want to call it and so now I have that that's something I did not show on Wednesday so that might be something you wanna utilize so what that's done let me just show it I'll type a new artist name <coughs> And I'm going to highlight it, and then I'm going to choose that headline. So notice what it's done for me. It just popped it into my font and into my color. So you can do that with any type that you want. Okay, so that's styles. Those, those can be handy. Um, Notice your little color picker thingy is a little bit different than, it, than what you're used to. So, like when I grab this type, right, it's showing, maybe it's showing a question mark because it's a style now. Oh, no, there it's showing it. So, notice I've got the type, um, the type there, and it's, it's filled with the color. If I switch it so I get the none, then I get a stroke on the type and I get no fill. So it shows it kind of separately. And the way that it, the reason it does it is because the other one you can switch into this mode or this mode. So you can be on type or you can be on box. So it gives you two options as well as fill stroke. So the fill stroke is the same as Illustrator, but the options change. So it's fill the type is separate, type is separate than the fill a box, for example. Say you wanted a colored box underneath the type, it's going to be separate. Um, but that's not all that complicated. Now for the, for the uh, interview, I wanted you guys to go in and I wanted you to, any time there was a question, I wanted you to change it. So, you know, so that it looks different. So the viewer knows, hey, that's the question, here's the answer. So, you know, you would go in and you would change your, your font. Maybe you would do italic instead to make it stand out. And maybe you would change the color as well. And then with that selected, since I've changed it, I could even make it a little bigger. I don't know, whatever you want to do to make it look different. 
then I could go in and I could once again make a new style. And I'm going to call this style uh, interview questions, or I'll say questions. And so now I don't have to go and keep doing that. I'd probably want that to be darker. That's a little light, but you know, I just go in now and I'm going to grab every time that he uh, is asking a question and I'll click question and it automatically does it for me. So that's way, way easier. And you would just go through all of them, changing that until you have them. Now I mentioned that it's important to read the article. Anytime you're laying anything out, you kind of need to. Uh, so you become well versed as a designer. If you're, you know, laying out magazines, you're going to know the content of all the part stuff you're laying out, and that's because you have to figure out where which pictures go with what, right? It's not a random thing. You're the designer is the the person who's in charge of the flow of the content and what appears where and making it so that it's understandable for the viewer. Also, as a designer, you have to make sure you don't make it hard to read. Like, if you put a big photo and have tiny columns where the viewer's reading, you know, two words at a time going down in a long vertical, that's going to be really annoying to the reader. So that would be a horrible thing to do. In the same way, you want to use crap. You want contrast, repetition, alignment, proximity. You don't want the writing to be hard to read. You don't want pictures underneath the writing when you don't have good contrast. And that's not, you know, it's just not going to show up well. Um, for the remainder of this, you know, we're going to, looks like we might be running out of time judging from Robin's moving. Um, but, uh, so I'll stop recording this and I'll do a new one for when we come back. Uh, but, the, you know, what we did when you guys weren't here, those of you that didn't start, we ended up placing all the pictures and making enough type boxes to have it all flow through the whole thing. The last thing I'm going to show you guys, and I'll show you when we come back, is going to be doing a clipping path around the picture uh, in its pr Princess Sput Sputnik. It's this one because it's an odd shape. So we're going to make the type wrap around that, and we're going to learn how to do the clipping path. <laughs>